we'll switch over, we'll focus in on the cost inflation index and how it impacts you in terms of computing your capital gains taxes for FY25. So we still have a year to go for that, but you can use the same theories for FY24 as well. But we have the CI number for FY25, which has come through. And uh, we have with us Mayur Shah, who's the partner, uh, uh, who's a tax partner with EY India. He deals more with individual taxation, joining us. But before that, just a quick brief on what CII is all about. Uh, Mayur, I'll just probably take a second to kind of uh, break this down a little bit in terms of basics before I bring you in. The CII has been hiked by just 15 points uh, in FY25 versus FY24, which is a 4.3% odd increase versus FY24. What exactly is CII? Well, it's the price of goods over time resulting in fall in purchasing power. And this is used as an adjustment factor for you, which is the investor or the consumer. And CI is used to adjust the cost price of your asset to make sure that you are not paying capital gains on the inflation part of the return which you are making on your capital gains. Uh, and therefore, it's a more fair calculation of capital gains, which is then subjected to tax. Uh, so just to debrief on the computation itself, well, if you bought a house property or an eligible asset, for INR 1 lakh in January of 2022, and you've now sold it for 5 lakh rupees, you would typically uh, believe that the gains that you've made is 4 lakhs, but that's incorrect. The CII will adjust for the gain. So the CII in 2001-2 was 100. The CII in 2024-25 is 363, and therefore your cost is 3 lakh 63,000 and not 1 lakh rupees and therefore 5 lakh rupees which is your sale price less 3 lakh 63,000 is 1 lakh 37,000 rupees which is your gain on which you will pay your taxes. Uh, Mayur first off uh, just want to try and understand give us a breakdown of the various assets which are eligible for an investor to claim uh, CI on for which uh, you know a, a better capital gain uh, a computation can be utilized. Sure. Uh, thanks. So, you know, uh, uh, what we can really look at the assets which are, uh, you know, subject to uh, uh, cost inflation index is any long any assets which are being held for long term uh, will be qualifying for that, barring few. So, let's take an example that equity shares of unlisted security, uh, unlisted companies would be eligible for it. Capital index bond, sovereign uh, bonds, real estate, or any other property. What is not eligible, and that is very important for everyone to understand, the assets which are held for less than the specified time period. So generally it is three years in respect of any property, but when it comes to shares, it has to be less than two years. That would result into a short-term capital gain and that would not be eligible for any benefit under uh, inflation index cost. <clears throat> now, along with it, debt-oriented fund, uh, uh, which is not eligible for it, as well as you know any uh, uh, equity oriented mutual fund or listed shares will not be eligible for it. Now, very recently, uh, you know, uh, ETF uh, related uh, uh, specified funds are not eligible for it and gold ETF is being covered as specified mutual fund and therefore that, uh, you know, gold ETF will also not be eligible for, uh, you know, indexation benefit. Any debt instrument like fixed deposit and other such things will also not be eligible for it. Bonds and debentures, except in case of bond capital index bond and sovereign bonds are uh, eligible for uh, benefit, but other bonds are not. And similarly, RBI taxable bonds, debentures uh, are also not eligible for uh, such benefit. The okay. another aspect which is there is that assets which uh, where you know cost cannot be ascertained and for example that tenancy right created by a person 
then the, those are also not, uh, you know, will not be eligible for inflation index cost. Got your point. So uh, let's break this into three baskets. First off, let's talk about real estate. Land, uh, would it be eligible? Uh, and uh, residential house property as well as other house properties would be eligible, right, Mayur? Absolutely right. So yes. any property which has been acquired hmm. would be eligible for such benefits if it has been held for more than three years. Got it. Second is gold. Uh, physical gold, gold ETF and sovereign gold bond. So I understand sovereign gold bond clearly covered, gold also covered and uh, ETF is not covered from my understanding of what you said. Absolutely right. Understood. And with regard to mutual funds, uh, debt mutual funds not covered uh, and equity oriented mutual funds as well as equity is not covered. Absolutely right. Okay. And within the bonds segment, capital indexed bonds are covered and uh, sovereign gold bonds which we spoke about are covered. Outside of that, nothing else covered, right? That is right. Okay. So, yeah. So, we've, we've broken this piece down. Uh, talk to us, uh, Mayur, about uh, how should one save taxes in case of long-term capital gains made on some of the assets which are not covered, uh, what are the provisions which we can lean on to save taxes uh, if we are not covered under cost of inflation index or we are covered under cost of inflation index uh, for that matter because we are at that time of the year where return filing is going to start maybe in a month or two. So uh, take us through some of those. What are the opportunities to save taxes? Yeah. So, you know, if uh, we invest in specified bonds, any capital gain arising are invested in specified bond, then up to 50 lakhs, that is eligible for exemption from capital gain tax. Similarly, if we have sold any assets other than immobile property or residential premises, and if it has been invested in residential premises subject to certain conditions, will also be exempt from taxation. And the third item is when any residential property is being sold and that has been invested in any prop, any other residential property subject to meeting other conditions, uh, then it that will also be eligible for exemption from capital gain tax. However, there are limits in these situations, whereas uh, investment in bonds uh, would be around 50 lakhs, whereas investment in pr residential property up to 10 crore is what is exempt from taxation. Anything in excess of that would be subject to tax based on the formula prescribed in. Understood. Uh, last off, Mayur, before we let you go, uh, you know, your CI numbers uh, for base year has been shifted to 2001-2, which is financial year ended 2002, which is now the base year, which is 100. Um, what should an investor who has invested in an asset prior to that how should he go about computing CII? Could you break that down for us? Sure. So, you know, when any person who has acquired assets before 1st April 2001, he has a choice to, uh, you know, reconsider his cost as if fair market value as on the 1st April 2001 or the original cost of investment, whichever is higher, can be regarded as cost. And therefore, that will take care of entire infl uh, inflation which has arose from the date of uh, which asset has been acquired till the till 1st april 2001 so that choice is available with the taxpayer and taxpayer can accordingly cover the uh, uh, in, in inflation arose till 1st april 2004 understood okay uh, that's that's a detailed breakdown thank you so much mayur for uh you know, coming in and speaking with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.